scholars disagree about this. The, the early scholars, and this is a debate in, within Islam, are these extremists really Muslims or not? I think the most correct view is that they are Muslims, and this is what most of the Salaf, the early scholars, uh, held this view, that they were Muslims, but they were just rebellious, ignorant, innovative, her, uh, you know, had heretical beliefs. But he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he would fight them even, showing us the permissibility to fight, the, fight these groups and to fight the Khawarij. That it is actually an obligation Islamically to fight them. Fight them with an authority, not going out in the street. You hear, you hear someone with this ideology, you smack them. No, that's not what Islam calls you to. Islam is free from that type of violence and so forth. But for the Muslim authority, the Muslim groups, it is permissible for them to fight these groups and even have coalitions as we see today. And there's so much evidence from the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam to illustrate this and from the fuqaha of this ummah. And this is not the time and place to go into the depth of those matters. But what we see today, these coalitions that are fighting extremism, that those extremists would cut our necks just as quick as they would cut anyone else's necks. Of course we have to, we have to stamp out this evil. And may Allah bless us with victory over them. I mean. I asked Sahal ibn Hunayf, did you hear the Prophet radiallahu ta'ala anhu, did you hear the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying anything about the Khawarij? He said, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, I heard him saying while pointing his hand toward Iraq, Let's repeat that. He said, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, I heard him saying, meaning the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while pointing his hand towards Iraq. Don't we see all this, a lot of these problems coming out of Iraq and Sham, wallahu musta'an. There will appear in it some people who will recite the Quran, but it will not go beyond their throats and they will go out from Islam as an arrow darts through the game's body. And we've witnessed this personally, I have to fill out countless times. A lot of times you see people who are so extreme, and of course extremism usually cannot sustain itself. Either extremists are killed, or they break their methodology. They can't remain that way. You can't remain always being so extreme that usually that extremists, some of them, they usually leave Islam. One minute they're supporters of bin Laden and all this extremism, next minute they're not even Muslim anymore because their ideology they found to be, it, it broke, it couldn't support them. Their extremism itself couldn't be supported. And they see the falsehood of their ideology, so they go to the other extreme of either secularism or just leaving Islam totally. And. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, there would appear in it, meaning Iraq, some people who will recite the Quran, but it will not go beyond their throats, and they will go out from it, going, go out from Islam as an arrow darts through the game's body. And because of this narration, some of the ulama say that the Khawarij, these extremists, are not even Muslim, that they are apostates from the religion of Islam. Some scholars say this. And they use this narration as evidence. So there's difference of opinion, but we know they're not in a good status. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, there would arise at the end of, uh, of the age a people who would be young in age. Look at these guys. A lot of these guys, this Abu Osama kid, he's a kid. He's trying to finish, was trying to finish university. Look at these other guy, teen from Brighton joins ISIS, is, is, is speculated as killed. Look in their videos, these are all young babies practically. They look like they're, some of these guys are in their teens. And some of them, they maybe get up to 40, they're young. Young, without experience, without knowledge, without much of anything. There would arise at the end of age a people who would be young in age and immature in thought. This is, these are Islamic texts. This is what Islam tells us. These are what the Salaf of this Ummah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, this is what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, our beloved Prophet. He told us they would be young in age, they would be immature in thought, but they would talk in such a manner as if their words are the best among the creatures. Charismatic. Charisma. 
They would recite the Quran, but it would not go beyond their throats. And they would pass through the deen as an arrow goes through the prey. So when you meet them, kill them, for in their killing you would get a reward with Allah on the day of judgment. We have to fight those. We have to fight this wicked ideology. There's no way we can sit and allow this to, to, to taint the beautiful, pristine religion of Islam and taint the image of the Muslims any longer. The original Khwarij also ignored the Sunnah and thought world events were better interpreted by their understanding of the Quran. This is a characteristic of the original Khwarij. They did they weren't known for adhering to the Sunnah because they claimed they made takfir of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam radiallahu ta'ala They said they didn't rule by the Sharia. Isn't this the same arguments that these people say you don't rule by the Sharia? These ones don't rule by the Sharia. They're apostates. We fight them. It's our understanding. We read the ayat. Here's the verse. Here's how it applies. But they don't have any fiqh for deen. The Prophet Muhammad said, Man khayran, Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. Those people, Allah, it, 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 the evidence suggests that Allah does not want good for these people because they have no fiqh fi deen. They have no understanding of the religion. They abandoned the sunnah of the Prophet as this young kid said, I read the Quran and I read the newspaper and that was enough for me to go join ISIS. Where's the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Imam Baba Hari said, Al-Islam huwa sunnah wa sunnah tuhi al-Islam. That Islam is a sunnah and the sunnah is Islam. And you can't have one without the other. This is Islam. It's a complete package. The beautiful manners, the beautiful characteristics, serving your parents, being kind to your neighbors, sharing Islam with people, not beheading people. That's not, that's not sharing Islam. Those aren't admirable characteristics. Cutting the necks of journalists? Beheading a journalist? What is a journalist? What threat? If anything, it could have further your cause to show that you were merciful. Even non-Muslims would say, hey, those guys might have some points that are positive if they saw that you were exhibiting some Islamic characteristics. Free the journalist. Oh, we found a hiker. Free him. What's the point of killing them? What's the point of going into a mall, to a mall, blowing up school children, blowing up mothers, blowing up the elderly, blowing up this one, killing this one, shooting this one? What? What have you achieved? What have you achieved for Islam? Nothing. And so we see the original Khwarij, they ignored the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and they interpreted world events according to their interpretation. Likewise, these groups today they interpret the Quran according to their understanding. And they take bits and pieces from classical scholars to try to support their methodology instead of taking all of Islam, all of the Nasus, and understanding what Islam has to offer. Isn't this the case with the young men and women who sacrifice for what they believe is Islam, but only fool themselves with brutality by being involved in themselves in takfir and false jihads, and slaughtering, and oppressing others. And so we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from the evil of these groups and sects. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide these youth back to the pristine understanding of Islam and practice of Islam so that they can get right with their Lord and that they can set an example of goodness for the world to, to, to understand Islam and for many people to embrace Islam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with amal nafir, uskan tayyib, or amal al Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.